hang on as we travel from ground elevation to 15 feet in the air following this orange wire. It's part of a Wyndham dipole, an office center fed dipole. I chose orange wire so it would be easy to see here in the HOA in the backyard. And oh my, is that what I think it is? Let's go ahead and follow the balance of the 22 feet, one inch wire on the other side of this Wyndham dipole, get it staked in the ground. And let's begin the conversation. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. This is my view of the modular portable antenna system. It is sponsored by Chameleon Antenna. When we started talking about this video series and all that we could share with the ham radio community, one of the conversations was, what do we demonstrate with taking components that we already have in our kit and utilizing them in ways that aren't commonly thought of. And this is absolutely one of those ways. A Wyndham dipole is an off-center fed dipole with high performance, able to be used on multiple bands without a tuner. Depending on the length of wire you choose, that will determine your greatest resonance. For me, my expectation based on my setup would have been excellent SWR on 40, 20, 10 and six, and indeed, that's what I have. What surprised me is just how close I was on several other bands that just need a quick touch of a tuner on 80, 60, 30, 17, 15, and 12. MPAS is an acronym for Modular Portable Antenna System. Modularity. Chameleon designed their MPAS systems to be just that. So whether you own a tactical Delta Loop, a light, a 2.0, or you just picked up the micro or mini and you put it with all of your other components that you already own from other manufacturers. That's how Chameleon designed this. You won't see a Wyndham dipole on their website, at least not today, but here you have a major component of the MPAS system that you can adapt and do this at your own QTH on your own setups and operations for POTA, wherever you wanna operate. This consists of a 44 foot five inch wire and a 22 foot one inch wire with a ring terminal that's sized to fit the three eighths by 24 studs on the MPAS light. Let's take it backyard portable, set it up, and show you how to operate with it. Let's get a bird's eye view for our newer amateur operators. We start with the center feed point, the micro or mini. We take our 44 foot wire down, stake it into the ground. I'm using an inverted V configuration, just have a center point here instead of a solid wire in an inverted V. On the right side, we go 22 feet and one inch and stake it into the ground. I have a 66 foot wide lot and this just barely fits in my backyard, but it's quite functional. Don't think height is might with a dipole. A dipole needs to be at the elevation needed for the particular bands that you're trying to operate on. Save height as might for your vertical antennas. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know I'm a huge fan of the Portamast. It can go portable with you. I have it in a concrete sleeve in the backyard. It comes down in seconds. No friction fit. It has an actual mechanical engagement. That's what I like about it. It goes up just as fast as it came down. Here I'm applying a crossover bracket kit from G Gable Radio. That lets me get my antenna wire far away from that metal mast, that aluminum mast, and that way I don't have any interference with my signals. I'm applying my coax first. I do have a choke near the end of that coax, and then I'm applying my extreme tape. Being here in the summer months of Florida, the storm can just pop up at any point in time. And since I'll be doing testing overnight here, even though the skies are clear and the forecast looks great, I could get rained on. I don't want any water interfering with my SWR or my transmissions. So I'm applying some of this extreme tape. If you're not familiar with this, it is not sticky at all. It just adheres to itself. So you stretch it, fold it back over itself, and it creates a watertight seal on your connectors. I use this all the time. Anytime I put in the antenna outside that I'm expecting to be subjected to the elements, whether it's my sprinklers in the backyard or the good old clouds coming through and dropping rain on us. The long wire, 44 feet, five inches in my case, gets attached to the radiating side 
of this matching unit. And then the short wire goes to the ground side of this matching unit. So if you're thinking of a vertical dipole that you would put up in the ground, yeah, that's, that's a vertical dipole. You have an element that goes straight up in the air and then you have a ground radial. Think of that as just a vertical dipole, so to speak. Here, the dipole is going up in the air. Long element goes on the radiating side, short element goes on the grounding side. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta something, uh, you went too quick. Slow it down. <laughs> Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, that certainly helps a whole bunch. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, it's Bob in Tampa, Florida. Just have a new off-center fed dipole. I have, you have the first contact here. I just wanted to check in and see how I'm sounding this evening. Over. Sounds okay. I mean, you're not from the station on the band because the uh, Bob, uh, because the uh, conditions aren't that great. But uh, uh, you're an S7 or thereabouts, maybe a little less, but uh, pretty darn close. Uh, and uh, you're you're clear. Over. QSL, you're also at about a 5.7 coming in clear to me. Uh, I appreciate the feedback, friend. I don't have any traffic for the net. Just wanted to check in. Over. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Bob. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. I'm going to clear up Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Zolf in Palm Harbor, Florida. This is Victor Alpha 6, Fox Journal Tell. I'm going to... I always appreciate what 14.300 does for all of us, whether it's emergency traffic or just letting average amateur radio operators check in and check conditions and performance of equipment. He said I was an S7. I'll take an S7 given those conditions. Whether I'm going remote operations or backyard portable, I always have with me a couple of lightweight ground stakes. I always make sure that my wire antennas have a loop in the end. The reason I do this is using cam jams, I can quickly get a hold of my wire. And now I've got my wire connection. A cam jam lets you take your power cord, quickly wrap it through, and jam the power cord in this serrated jam. That's what it is. And then I've got a tight connection and you can quickly adjust this to the various lengths that you need and it stays tight. This is how I set up my antennas in the backyard and portable operations. Here's a 24 hour weak signal propagation report, whisper on 80 through 10 meters. And for that same time frame, now on 40 meters, next up 20, and finally 10 meters. 10 meters has been hammered lately. I ask a lot of the people on my Facebook group page, HOA Ham, hey, how are you guys doing on 10 meters? And everybody's come back to me, said no contacts whatsoever. So I don't think this is indicative of my whisper transmitter or the antenna. I think it's just what the conditions are at this point in time. Don't confuse being able to make a whisper contact with being able to make a single sideband voice contact. Whisper is a indicator tool. It lets you see where the propagation paths are. It lets you compare identical antennas, which I've done previously. I've taken two identical antennas and put one variable on one to see the difference in performance. I'll be doing another video similar to that soon. If any of you have a simple conversion chart that if you can get X on Whisper, you should be able to equal Y on single sideband voice. Could you leave something in the comments below or send me an email? I would love to be able to get my hands on some type of conversion chart to help this be more intelligible for the viewers. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KD4 BMG. This is not an 80 meter antenna. If you want an 80 meter off center fed dipole, get yourself the appropriate length wire. I did want you to see the SWR and here's a clip on how well it can hear. It is a 40 meter antenna and small footprint for 40 meters. So you get 40, 20, 10, and six. That's where we expect it to be resonant. I did some POTA hunting the other night and caught several with no problem. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Wow, there you are, Bob. I got you at 5-5 in the park. QSL, you're 5-7, Tampa, Florida. Copy 
73, have a blast. It's the portable antenna system and it's meant to be modular. Chameleon antenna isn't insulted at all if you take other manufacturers gear and put it on top of the Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini. Do some experimentation, take Chameleon parts and mix them up. Do something new. Just recently you saw me take an Ampass light, put a lazy sloper 60 foot wire on it and give me all new possibilities. The vertical 17 SS17 was my mast in that case. And here we took two lengths of wire and made a Wyndham dipole resonant on 40, 20, 10 and six. Soon up on the channel, we're going to get a look at a capacitance hat. What does it do? How does it work? Hope you're finding this series fun and useful friend. I am, talk to you soon, 73.